Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this inside of Blender. So to make this animation, we're going to need a couple of things. First, we need our environments. I'm going to make three, but you can feel free to make as many as you'd like. Then, we're going to need to create our camera distortion, which is a very quick and easy setup. After that, we'll figure out how to animate our events or anomalies and create our spooky figure. And finally, we can add some sound effects and a cool security camera filter and we'll be all done. For my animation, I wanted to make three different indoor areas, a stairwell, a hallway, and an office. And to make these environments quickly and easily for the sake of our tutorial, I'm going to be using my favorite add-on, Blender Kit, which offers a great library of different materials and models that you can access all within the program. And it's free! You can find the link to download Blender Kit in the description. So the first environment I'm going to be making is my stairwell. I start by adding in this concrete staircase from Blender Kit. I then add a cube and squash it down a bit to make the landing for the next floor and copy the material of the stairs to it. You can do this by pressing Ctrl and the L key and then hitting Link Materials. After some slight adjusting, I duplicate my stairs and move on to adding the railings. I add a cube and stretch it in edit mode to fit alongside the steps. I flatten the bottom and then inset the face just for some detail. Then I add a new cube and shape it into what I want the railing supports to be. I apply an array modifier which duplicates it up along the stairs. To make my actual railing, I add in a curve and go into its bevel properties to give it thickness. Then I just bend it around the stairs and we have a railing. I add this cube and remove its front face to create the walls of my stairwell. After some scaling adjustments, I go in and add the bottom and topmost floors of concrete. Then I begin looking for a material for my walls. I ended up picking this one from Blender Kit and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. My walls were still looking a bit bare though, so I added a white molding along the floor, a door, and some pipes as well. I make this little overhead light above my door and then begin adding a hallway behind the closed door. I'm doing this because I plan on showing my door open later in the video, so I don't want there to just be nothing behind it. 
I then went in and added this rubber layer onto my steps. I don't really know what it is, but I noticed it in my references, and it gave the scene just another little level of detail that it needed. Then I add some extra railings and a few other details, and the stairwell is done. And now, we're onto the hallway. And since we have three environments to make in this video, we're going to do these next two a bit quicker. So, I start with a cube, and in edit mode, I elongate it and add a loop cut to make a bend at the end. After this, I select my walls, ceiling, and floor, and separate them all by pressing the P key in edit mode. Once they're all separated, I add my materials, carpet for the floors, drywall for the walls, and tiles for the ceiling. I added in some lights, and then I moved on to adding the doors. I found this nice one in Blender Kit and duplicated it around the hallway. After that, I added these pillars bumping out from the walls, just to make them a bit more interesting and less flat. Then I added a trim around the ceiling and floors, and then my hallway was complete. Now, to the final and most important scene, the office. I follow the same cube procedure as I did with the hallway, deleting the front and separating the sides. I also apply the three same materials and then add in my scale of reference as well as a pillar in the corner and trim. Now I'm ready to place my furniture. I start with the desk and then this bookshelf which I duplicate and put against the wall. I put this other set of drawers along the back and then begin cutting out holes in my back wall for windows. I do this by creating some loop cuts in edit mode and then insetting the faces by pressing the I key. Then I add in some blinds and now I have this cool lighting effect. After messing around with the lights some more, I go back to decorating, adding a lamp, a computer and keyboard, papers, and books. And now the office is complete, and we're ready to move on to the second main step, the camera distortion. So, once we're in Blender, in your scene, go up here to the compositing tab. Then once we're inside here, in the top left, you're gonna see this button that says use nodes and we're going to wanna check that. Now, before you do anything else, make sure you go up to render in the top left, and hit render image. This is gonna be very important in the, uh, in the fisheye process. Just make sure you've done this at least once. Okay, now that you've rendered your image, we're going to press shift plus A, and then we're going to search for lens distortion. Once we have that node here, we'll also see that our render image that we just rendered has popped up here. What we're going to want to do is we're going to plug in our image from the render layers node into the image input of the lens distortion. And then with the lens distortion node selected, we're going to hold control, shift, and click on it. And that will give us a viewer node. We can then see the changes that the lens distortion is going to be making to our final render. So we can go into the distort option here and press 0.2 and all of a sudden you can see that you know it's warping the image obviously this isn't that great we're going to want to select fit so it fits to the thing or to the uh to the composition of the render and now you can see it's getting this slight curvature around the edges which is like a like a fisheye effect and you can play around with this as much as you want you can put it up to like five and go really crazy but um i think for my project i found 0.2 works really well you can also do this dispersion option and that kind of creates a chromatic aberration around the edges and that looks really cool but you might want to tone that one down a bit more than the uh, than the fisheye effect and this is pretty much all that it takes um, if you want to make sure this goes on your final render just remember um, take this out of the viewer node and put it back to composite and you'll be good to go and you can use it on images and animations so it's a really cool trick to know and now you're all set to move on to the next step Hey guys, I'm going to interrupt the video real quick for just a couple of announcements. First, I want to let you guys know that we now have an official Discord server up for the channel. So, if you want to share your own spooky animations with me and the rest of the community, the link to join will be down in the description. I also ask that you guys go check out the Patreon page, because for just $1 a month, you can help support me, and I'll give you a shout out at the end of my videos. Or, if you're willing to pay 3 or $5 a month, you not only get shoutouts, but exclusive access to my Blender scenes and models. Currently, these are all of the projects that are available for you right now over there on the Patreon page, with plenty more to come. So definitely go check that out, and if you want more cool stuff, or for me to say your name at the end of the videos, become a member today using the link in the description. 
Okay, so now that all of our environments are ready to go, it's time to make some anomalies, or spooky things to happen in our scenes. So, my main events are going to be an envelope falling, a door closing, and the appearances of this creepy figure. I'm also going to be doing some sound-based anomalies, but we're not going to do those until a bit later in the video. First, let's focus on my envelope. At first, I tried doing this with a physics simulation, and then I realized I don't know how to use physics in Blender, so I just keyframed the animation by hand instead. I should probably learn how to do simulations. I also went to my stairwell and simply keyframed the door to swing closed when the camera cuts back to it. In addition, I trashed my office and give a shot of my hallway door being open. It's good to get as many of these as you can to build up some variety in your scenes. That way, when you cut between them, there's differences for people to notice. It just makes it a lot more interesting to watch. And now, we need to make a monster. Since I'm lazy, I went to Mixamo, another great free resource by the way, and downloaded this dude. <laughs> what a cutie. We're gonna import him into Blender to give him a little makeover. There I messed around with the sculpting tools, and I realized you can really warp his textures and proportions just by moving around some vertices, which ended up turning him from this to this. Perfect. Once he was made, I just placed him into my environments and quickly put him in all the positions and poses I needed. I also went back to Mixamo and grabbed this cool crawling animation, which I applied to my guy to make this creepy entrance shot. Once you're happy with all of your anomaly shots, it's time to render. We're going to want to go over here to this panel on the right called Render Properties. So if you're using Eevee like me, just make sure you have all your additional settings checked. Uh, ambient Occlusion, Bloom, Screen Space, Motion Blur. So make sure you guys have all of those checked off if you're using Eevee. Once you have all of that sorted out, we're going to go to the panel underneath Render Properties called Output. Once we're in Output Properties, we're going to want to scroll down to just the Output setting. And this is where all the important stuff happens. So first, we're going to want to select a file location. This is going to dictate where your render is going to go. I already have mine picked out. So just click here and find a, a place where you want your video to go when it gets exported. And then once you're done that, you want to go down here to File Format just make sure you have AVI JPEG selected. Um, the default is PNG. We want to swap it to AVI JPEG. It just ensures that it actually exports as a video and not a bunch of single separate images. And once you have all of this stuff set up, you're good to go. And you can come up here to the top left, hit render and click render animation. Now we're probably onto the most important part, the editing and audio. To do this, I'm going to be using yet another free program, DaVinci Resolve. Link to download DaVinci will be in the description. Before we begin adding audio though, I want to quickly show you guys how to apply the camera effect. So let's just put one of our clips, um, I already moved mine in here. Let's put one of our clips over here on the timeline, so we just drag it over like that. Then select your clip, and um, once you're in the editing section down here, this is um, the editing window in DaVinci, we're going to come over here to the toolbox and go under the effects tab. And once you're in effects, there'll be a thing called fusion effects, this um, drop down here. And it's right at the top, it's called CCTV. So let's just drag CCTV onto our footage and voila, we have a little security cam overlay. Also, just as a disclaimer, make sure you have the most recent version downloaded. Currently, I'm on version 18.6.4, but I found on my other PC where I only have version 18, this effect is not included for free. So just be sure you have the most recent version of uh, DaVinci Resolve and the CCTV effect should be included in the uh, free version of the program. And if you want to just mess around with the, uh, the rest of the effects, you'll see on the right hand side up here, you can just uh, mess around with any of the filters properties. So you can change the scan lines. Uh, if you want to get some color back, you can pull this up, change the noise size. It's all customizable and it's really, really great can put a record light on there and you can even go into the text controls and change what it says in the different sections which I did in my own video so feel free to just mess around with the settings and find what you like now let's look at audio you can have great visuals but without sound it all falls flat so to find some good sounds I went to the trusty YouTube audio library I found this light buzzing sound I wanted for my camera to give it that electric feel, and then a few different ambient backgrounds for each room. 
Once we have all of these, just go and place them under your footage. I change the pitch of my buzzes depending on which camera we're on, so it makes them feel slightly more different and creates more variety. For example, here's what my stairwell sounds like versus my hallway. I also got some sounds for when he crawls into the room, the door closing, and the crashing of the bookshelves. And once we finished all of that and rendered our animation, this is the final result. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I'm having a lot of fun making these tutorials. I'm just um, a massive fan of all that analog horror, found footage stuff. So getting to share this with you all is just really, really fun. And I wanna give a big thanks to your support on that last tutorial. I mean, wow. I don't know what it'll be at by the time this video releases, but it's now the fastest growing video on my channel, ever. And the comments you guys were leaving are just so helpful and so supportive. And I just really want to give a, a big thanks. And on one final note, we have our first paid patrons. Remember, if you want to be mentioned at the end of the videos, all you got to do is sign up for as little as $1 a month. I know I'd really appreciate it. And uh, be sure to check out the Discord server. Anyway, that's all for me. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.